Hi, good day. Welcome again to our class. Today, we are going to continue our discussion on polyhedrons. Another polyhedron is the parallelepiped. Now, this parallelepiped is a derivative of a rectangle. Imagine your refrigerator. The refrigerator is a good example of a parallelepiped. Or your cabinets or your apparadors. These are good examples also of a parallelepiped. Now, the area in getting the volume of a parallelepiped is volume of the parallelepiped equals length times width times height. So imagine your refrigerator. The refrigerator has three dimensions. You have the length, you have the width, and then you have the height. Suppose we are asked to get the volume of a parallelepiped. Let us imagine the refrigerator. Or you can look at your refrigerator right now. Now, suppose your refrigerator measures 1.5 feet as its width and 1.5 feet as its length. And the height is 6 feet. So, using the formula for a volume of a parallelepiped, substitute the values given, which are 1.5 times 1.5 times 6. So, multiplying all these factors will give us 13.5 cubic feet. Another polyhedron is a cylinder. Now, if you're going to look at a cylinder, it is actually a rectangle that is allowed to rotate around a fixed axis of rotation. So, once this rectangle rotates around the fixed axis of rotation, you can see that its edge traces a circular path. Now, if you're going to look at the top view of the cylinder, it is a circle. So, it follows that the base is also a circle. So, there are two bases now of a cylinder. The upper base and the lower base. And these two bases are at some distance called height. The formula in determining the volume of a cylinder is volume of a cylinder equals pi r squared h where r there is the radius of the circle and h is the height or the perpendicular distance between the two bases now suppose we are asked to get the volume of a cylinder with a diameter of 30 centimeters and a height of 8 centimeters. So, because the formula is pi r squared h, substitute the value of radius, which is half of the diameter. So, you have it there. Radius will become 15 because the given diameter is 30. When you square 15, then you have 225 then multiply this by pi and the height which is 8 centimeters so the volume of the cylinder is 5,654.88 cubic centimeters now let's go to the solid objects which are irregularly shaped how do we get its volume for solid objects which are irregularly shaped, the volume can be taken by water displacement method. Now, this water displacement method applies the Archimedes principle, which states that the volume of the liquid displaced is equal to the volume of the object 
which is totally immersed into the liquid. Now, because there is what we call water displacement, so we need to know what is the initial volume reading of the liquid before the object is placed into the liquid and the final reading of the liquid after placing the object into the liquid. Suppose we are going to measure the volume of a stone. So, we will place the stone into a beaker with water. Initially, the beaker contains 25 ml of water. And when we place the stone into this beaker with water, the water level rises up to 40 ml. So if you're going to look at the change in the liquid level, so you have the initial is 25 ml, and the final liquid level is 40 ml. So there is a difference of 15 ml. Now, based on Archimedes' principle, that the volume of the liquid displaced is equal to the volume of the object that is immersed totally into the liquid. So, because in this problem, there is a displacement of 15 ml, so we can say that the volume of that stone dropped into the beaker with water is also 15 ml. So we are done discussing about the volume of solids. Let's go to the volume of the liquid and the gas. For liquids and gases, the volume can be expressed in terms of, in the metric system, we have the microliter, the milliliter, and we have also the liter. Now, what is the relationship between the microliter, the milliliter, and the liter? One liter is equal to 1,000 milliliter, and one liter is also equal to 1 million microliter. In the English system, we have the units which are fluid ons, we have also the pint, the quart, and the gallon. What is the relationship between these units? One pint equals 16 fluid ons. One quart equals two pints, and one gallon equals four quarts. Now, there is an interrelationship between the metric system and the English system to express volume. We know that in one gallon, there are four liters. However, the strictest sense of its equivalent, one gallon is equal to 3.78 liters. One cubic feet equals 7.48 gallons. One cubic yard equals 202 gallons. One cubic feet of fresh water equals 62.5 pounds. Whereas one cubic feet of seawater equals 64 pounds. Another derived quantity is the density. Density is defined as the quantity of matter occupying a unit volume. So that means there is a relationship between mass and the volume. Now, in the previous discussion about the fundamental quantities, we were discussing about the mass. And in the derived quantities, we discuss about the volume. If we're going to make a ratio between the mass and the volume, this is the quantity density. So, what must be the unit of density? If the mass is in grams and the volume is in milliliters, so the unit for density is grams per ml. Or, if the unit of mass is pounds, 
and the volume is cubic feet so density will have the unit pounds per cubic feet suppose we are asked to get the density of a certain substance with a mass of 30 grams and occupies a volume of 55 cubic centimeters so substituting to the formula of density which is density equals mass of an object over the volume of that same object so substituting the values to the formula d equals mass over volume so you have 30 divided by 55 the answer is density equals 0.54 grams per cc or 0.54 grams per ml now 1 cc is approximately equal to 1 ml much related to density is what we call specific gravity specific gravity is defined as the density of the substance divided by the density of water taken at 4 degrees centigrade which is 1 gram per ml now why is it that the density of water is really taken at 4 degrees centigrade the reason is that at 4 degrees centigrade the 1 ml of water exactly weighs 1 gram. So going back to the formula of specific gravity, which is specific gravity equals the density of the substance divided by the density of water, which is 1 gram per ml. So if you're going to look at their units, they are both expressed in terms of grams per ml because it's only a ratio between two densities. You can cancel out these units gram per ml divided by gram per ml. So what happens to the specific gravity? The specific gravity therefore has no unit. The value of the specific gravity is actually equal to the density of the substance. Another derived quantity is the specific heat. Now what is specific heat? This is the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of one gram of any substance one degree higher. The formula in getting the specific heat of a substance is Specific heat is equal to the heat energy divided by the mass and the change in temperature. So mathematically, it is represented as C equals Q over M times delta T. Where C there is the specific heat, the Q is the heat energy required, the M is the mass and the delta T is the change in temperature. When we say the change in temperature, this means that you have to take the difference between the final temperature and the initial temperature of the substance concerned. Now, since the unit for heat energy is in calories and the mass is in grams and the change in temperature can be degree centigrade or Kelvin so the unit for specific heat will be calories per gram per degree centigrade or calorie per gram Kelvin suppose we are asked this problem how many calories of heat is needed to change 100 grams of water from 18 degrees centigrade to 
19.5 degrees centigrade. So in a problem we are given that the mass of the water is 100 grams and the temperature is from 18 degrees centigrade to 19 degrees centigrade. So there is a difference of 1.5 degrees centigrade. Since we are asking a problem to get the number of calories, this means in the formula we have to rearrange it in order to arrive at the working equation. If the formula is C equals Q over M times delta T, we are going to rearrange it and get the value for Q. So the working equation now will become Q equals M C delta T. Now, we said that the C there represents the specific heat. It is a fact that the specific heat of water is 1 calorie per gram per degree centigrade. So substituting all the values given in the problem, including the specific heat of water, the equation will become Q equals 100 grams times 1 calorie per gram per degree centigrade times 1.5 degrees centigrade. So you can cancel out the units which are the grams and the degree centigrade, leaving the unit calories. So the answer is the heat required in order to change the temperature of the 100 grams of water from 18 degrees to 19.5 degrees is 150 calories. So that would be all about the measurement of the fundamental quantities and the derived quantities. So next meeting, I will give a quiz about measurement. This is your teacher, Nisita Ruiz of Holy Name University.